It's been a long time since I've released a Red Dead Redemption 2 Secrets video, and to be honest, I kinda missed it, so today we are back. I've compiled together a list of 20 of the most difficult secrets and easter eggs to discover in the game, and where exactly to find them. Whether it be because of their remote location, specific scenario, or some that people just never realised, hopefully today you'll learn of a few you weren't aware of. I'll be splitting each one into its own chapter, so if you already know of the current secret, feel free to skip on over to the next. As always, if you enjoy the following, you all know what to do, and if you're new here and aren't subscribed to the channel already, please consider doing so. And with that being said, let's get straight into today's content. To start off strong, let's begin with one I think most players may have missed. Around the back of the Braithwaite Manor, there's a large tree with a carving that reads where the death adder spits. If you open your in-game map and locate Copperhead Landing, you'll notice the layout somewhat resembles a snake, and in its spitting distance, if you will, are a collection of small islands. Upon exploring this area, you'll discover a lockbox containing a faded letter from Lucille Braithwaite to Douglas Gray, giving an explanation to the ongoing feud between the two rivaling families. In the epilogue, if John meets and has a conversation with Anders Helgeson, a recruiter for the Chelonian cult, he can then trigger a hidden interaction that some may not have realised. Visiting the same location as Arthur does in Chapter 2, John will find the cult is still lurking in the area. One by one, the members sacrifice themselves by launching off a cliff, but if you follow them over yourself, you'll hear John scream as if he were part of the group too. In the town of Rhodes, if you find this lady and for some reason decide to hogtie and loot her, you'll come across a letter on her person from Scruffers & Co. Publishers. Reading the letter will reveal that the lady is a writer and had a manuscript titled The Education of a Young Witch Rejected by Said Publisher. This is of course a real world reference to J.K. Rowling and the Harry Potter series of books, which was rejected multiple times over before finally being given a chance. In the later stages of the game, as either Arthur or John, the player can visit the Mayor of Saint-Denis, who requests from them a series of intimidation tactics to further his political power. His right hand, John Mark, becomes his next target, and the player has the choice to either kill the man or spare him. If you kill John Mark and throw his corpse into the waters to the rear of the residence, when fishing in the same spot some time later, you'll catch something you didn't quite bargain for. But damn! John Mark? Is that you? Uh... Being out on the trail for a time can lead to Arthur becoming somewhat unclean. Of course, you can take him to a bathhouse to get freshened up, but did you know that there's a hidden cutscene if he returns to camp in such a state? Susan Grimshaw makes short work of Arthur if he does so. On a tree a little north of Flatneck Station, there's a carving made by a pair of lovers that reads, March 1898, Lily loves Alfred, always in my heart. Returning to this area during the epilogue portion, you'll soon learn that the once promising relationship didn't end too well, as the carving has been updated. It now adds, and in my crotch, thanks for the clap you shit, February 1903. Most know of the following, but it only appears once during your playthrough, making it very easy to miss. At around 3am, if the player is to wait near this welcome sign to Lemoyne, you may be lucky enough to encounter an entity in the form of a ghost train. This is very difficult to trigger, I've only personally managed it once in all my time in the game, but if you're lucky enough, it's quite a sight. In the Tall Trees region, to the west of Mantonita Post, the player will come across Bearclaw Camp. The camp itself tells its own story of horror, but what some may not have noticed is what happens if you choose to descend down the well located here. Using your lantern, everything looks pretty normal, but if you extinguish it, you'll notice that the player's appearance turns into a ghostly apparition, indicating that the well may very well be haunted. 
whilst we're diving into wells, if you head just north of Rhodes to the vacant Compson Stead and choose to descend down this well, you'll find wall markings often made by prisoners to keep track of how many days they've been locked away. This particular plot of land was known to home slaves at one point, but not many may have realised that they were kept in more than just the basement of the property. A little north of Moonstone Ponds, there's a large sculpture carved into the rock face of a lady. Unfortunately, there's a gentleman there who's taken his own life. Something that may have been missed by some is the letter on his person. It goes on to describe how he spent so much time dedicating his work to his lover that he lost her in the process to a Frenchman, whom is also an artist. If you haven't figured it out, the man who's referring to is the colourful character Charles Chatonnet. Speaking of Charles Chatonnet, in one of the interactions with him, the player is prompted to rescue him from a killing, after he's been caught betting another man's wife. Most will interfere, of course, but did you realise that there's an alternate cutscene if you stand idly by? I don't want to die! Please! Just be suddenly! I'm sorry! I'll do anything! Well, you ain't no kind of man at all! I don't know what I was getting so fixed about. Oh, merci! Thank you! A man or not, you'll get a bullet if I see you again. Uh, of course! Merci! And merci to you too! Great good deal you did for me! Come on! You got yourself into trouble? Got yourself out of it! Oh, maybe, mon ami. Maybe. If only the getting out of trouble was as much fun as getting into it. <laughs> Sometimes the getting in ain't so fun either. Oh, then you're getting into the wrong kind of trouble, huh? There's a movie reference hidden deep in the woods north of Hanging Dog Ranch. If you explore the area, you'll discover the remains of a man and a bear, both of whom have met a violent end during a tussle with each other. This is a nod to the legendary frontiersman Hugh Glass, who is famous for having a very similar encounter with the bear, but fortunately he survived. This was more popularised due to the film The Revenant. You can also grab the unique antler knife that's sticking in the animal. In the Blackbone Forest area of West Elizabeth, there's a native burial site that the player can make note of in their journal. Most may be aware of this, but there's a hidden interaction that may have eluded some. If you are to throw a Molotov or fire bottle at either the mask or the ground itself, it will always automatically begin to rain, as if the gods are extinguishing the flames. Ever wondered where the flamboyant Josiah Trelawney disappears when he goes AWOL from the gang multiple times throughout the story? Well, if you visit this home in Saint Denis, you'll have your answer. That was absolutely delicious, my dear. Thank you. Well, I think a toast is in order, don't you? Here, let's fill that water glass, Tarkin. It's unlucky to cheers on an empty glass. Okay. To the Trelawneys. It's good to be home. Hello? Trelawney? Um, uh, <clears throat> Arthur? What on earth are you doing here? Uh, I can't speak now. Sorry. Can we catch up in the office on Monday? Let's adjourn to the parlor, my dear. Not a moment's peace. The general store in the town of Strawberry is owned and operated by Chip Cooper. Most are aware of the hidden side business he's running in the basement, but have you noticed anything else about the man? If you position yourself just right, or as I did, use a free cam mod, you'll notice that the store owner actually has a prosthetic leg. Given his age, it's likely that he lost it during the Civil War. Up in the Grizzlies East, those who go somewhat off trail may encounter a silent monk who's meditating. While most would leave this man in peace, the player can have a little fun with him if they want to. Don't fall off. <laughs> Am I bothering you? You can hear me. Hello. Remember to concentrate. Am I annoying you? Don't lose your focus. Come on. Ah! 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 Near Mantonita Post, once again off the trail, there's an abandoned circus wagon. 
the player can make note of this in their journal, but there's more to do with this location than some may have realised. In the rear of one of the vehicles, there's a mechanical fortune teller that when prompted can sometimes give pretty accurate readings to the protagonist. You have come to the great Madame Irene, seeking your future. Listen closely. You may not know where you are going, but you should cut your hair before you get there. The following is only a small detail, but one that many may not have noticed. The clergyman of the gang, Reverend Swanson, is always strung out on either drink or narcotics, and if you say it's the Camp Thullery and come across his Bible, opening it will reveal his hidden stash of morphine. The ghost train isn't the only apparition in the game, and just like it, it's difficult to trigger. For those who travel through Blue Water Marsh at around 3am, always on a foggy night, they have a chance of encountering the ghost of Agnes Dowd. Sometimes it's her voice, and sometimes she appears. Come back to me. Come home. Lastly today, there's a special type of canoe hidden deep within the marshes of the bayou. Heading to the location I've marked on the map, you can find this individual looking longer boat that is completely accessible. Just be careful of the alligators that roam the surrounding waters. So there you go, that was 20 of the most difficult secrets and easter eggs in Red Dead Redemption 2 and how to find them. If you guys enjoyed and wish to see a second one, be sure to let me know in the comment section. Also, if you're new here and aren't subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. Thank you all for watching, you've been listening to Phil of Philby Gaming, and I'll see you in the next one.